I'm Sandy Ferguson, a loan officer at the local bank. One evening, I was sitting at my desk going through my checkbook. Something felt off. The numbers didn't add up. Puzzled, I decided to log into my online banking account to see where the discrepancy lay. Fred, my husband and I shared the computer, but he rarely used it, so it was mostly my territory. As I scanned through the transactions, relief washed over me when I realized I'd simply forgotten to record a deposit. I quickly noted it in my checkbook, aligning the balance to what I expected. But just as I was about to log off, a small green icon at the top of the screen caught my eye. Curiosity got the better of me, and I clicked on it. A history tab popped open, revealing a list of recently visited websites. One particular entry labeled Sissy stood out, and without much thought, I clicked on it. The screen loaded a forum titled Sissy and Humiliation Board. My heart raced, a mix of confusion and intrigue swirling within me. There, in plain sight, was a username Sissy Larry, a name I'd never heard before. But as I delved deeper, reading through the posts, the sinking realization hit me. The details were too familiar. The experiences and desires echoed the life I shared with Fred. Each post by Sissy Larry revealed a hidden world of yearning for domination, cross-dressing, and humiliation. Phrases like, my wife is very vanilla, and she would never understand my desires, punctured my heart. The anonymity of the internet provided Fred a sanctuary to express his concealed fantasies, ones he never dared share with me. As I sat there, absorbing the shock, a whirlwind of emotions enveloped me. Betrayal for the secrets kept, sadness, for the unshared desires, and an overwhelming sense of loss for the intimacy I thought we had. The man I lived with, the man I thought I knew, harbored a life I was oblivious to. And with every click, every post I read, the stranger in my husband emerged more vividly. Torn between confronting him and pretending ignorance, I felt lost. The digital traces of Fred's alter ego painted a portrait of longing and desperation a side of him that was now exposed to me, raw and unfiltered. The weight of this discovery pressed heavily on my chest, leaving me breathless and alone in the quiet of our shared space. A space that suddenly felt as unfamiliar as the secrets I had just uncovered. The shock of the discovery lingered like a heavy fog in my mind, but as the initial wave of emotion subsided, a spark of curiosity ignited within me. I found myself revisiting the forum, scanning through threads and posts, trying to piece together the hidden part of Fred's world. It was a realm so foreign, yet it held a bizarre fascination for me. Each click, each story and article I read was like peeling back a layer, revealing more about the desires my husband harbored. I started printing out stories that resonated with Fred's posts, articles on understanding cross-dressing and guides on female domination. My desk, once cluttered with bills and mundane paperwork, became a mosaic of this hidden world. I pored over them late into the night, my eyes tracing each word, trying to absorb the complexities of this lifestyle. It was like studying for a role I never auditioned for, yet somehow I was considering stepping onto the stage. The more I read, the more I understood, or at least I tried to. There was a community a whole culture I was oblivious to, where desires like Fred's were not just accepted, but celebrated. The stories were filled with emotions, challenges, and ultimately, acceptance and love. They painted a picture of trust, exploration, and mutual fulfillment, aspects that had faded in the corners of our marriage. As I delved deeper, my initial shock and confusion gradually morphed into empathy. Fred's desires, once so alien, began to make sense. I saw the loneliness in his silence, the pain of his suppression, and amidst the whirlwind of feelings, a surprising thought took root. What if I could be the one to fulfill these fantasies? What if I could step into this role that he secretly craved? The idea was daunting. I had always seen myself as the vanilla wife as Fred described. The thought of dominating someone, let alone my husband, felt like stepping into a pair of shoes that were too large, too daunting. But the seed of curiosity had been planted, and it was growing, watered by the stories of transformation and empowerment I read each night. With each article, each forum post I absorbed, the idea of embracing this part of Fred's life became less intimidating 
and more intriguing. I started envisioning scenarios, wondering how I could broach the subject, how I could initiate this uncharted journey for us both. It wasn't just about the physical act of cross-dressing or the dynamics of domination and submission. It was about bridging the gap that had silently grown between us, reaching out to the man I loved in a way I never imagined. The nights were spent in contemplation and planning, crafting a delicate approach to a subject so fragile and so potent. I felt like a detective piecing together clues, building a case for a role that could either mend or further widen the chasm in our marriage. With each night that passed, the decision beckoned with a mix of fear and excitement, heralding a path that could change everything. And deep down, a part of me yearned to walk that path, to explore the hidden depths of our relationship and possibly rediscover each other in a world where Fred's secret fantasies were no longer just whispered desires in the dark. The decision to confront Fred didn't come lightly. My heart was a battleground of doubt and resolution, but the need for honesty and understanding tipped the scales. I couldn't let the secrecy that enveloped our marriage continue to grow like a silent cancer. So I planned the confrontation with meticulous care, each step calculated, yet my emotions were a whirlwind of anxiety and anticipation. The day felt surreal, as if I were moving through a dense fog, my actions automatic while my mind raced with possibilities. That evening, as the shadows grew longer and the house settled into silence, I knew the moment had arrived. My hands trembled slightly as I prepared the handcuffs I had purchased, a stark symbol of the new dynamic I was about to introduce into our marriage. When Fred came home, I greeted him with a calmness I didn't feel. My heart was pounding, echoing loudly in my ears as we went through the motions of a normal evening. But tonight was anything but ordinary. As he relaxed on the sofa, I approached him, the handcuffs hidden behind my back, my decision solidified with each step I took. Sandy, what's going on? Fred asked, noticing the serious look in my eyes. Fred, we need to talk, I said, my voice steady but soft. I revealed the handcuffs, seeing the confusion and then alarm flash across his face. Before he could protest, I gently, yet firmly, took his wrists and secured them with the handcuffs. The click of the metal was like a thunderclap in the quiet room. I know about Sissy Larry, I said, the words hanging between us, heavy with unspoken emotions. His eyes widened, a mix of fear, embarrassment, and something else I couldn't quite decipher. Sandy, I can explain, he stammered, but I raised my hand to stop him. No, let me talk. I've seen your posts, your fantasies, your hidden world. And I want to understand, Fred, I want to understand you, I confessed, my voice quivering with a cocktail of emotions. The room was thick with tension, each second stretching out endlessly. I saw the myriad of emotions crossing Fred's face, the initial shock, the shame, and then surprisingly, a glimmer of relief. It was as if a part of him had been waiting for this moment, for the secret to be dragged into the light. Taking a deep breath, I steadied my resolve. Fred, I'm willing to explore this part of you, the part you've kept hidden from me. But we need to be honest with each other. No more secrets, no more hiding. The conversation that followed was a delicate dance of confession and discovery. Fred, still handcuffed, opened up about his desires, his fears, and the deep-seated longing for acceptance and domination. And as he spoke, I felt a strange empowerment taking root within me. The pieces of the puzzle that was my husband were finally coming together, forming a picture I was beginning to understand and accept. With each word, the gap that had distanced us was slowly bridged. The vulnerability in Fred's eyes, the way his voice shook, and the raw honesty of his words touched something deep within me. It was as if we were meeting for the first time, two souls laid bare, exploring the depths of our desires and fears. The decision to step into the role of the dominant, to initiate Fred's transformation into his feminine persona, was no longer just a response to his hidden fantasies. It became a journey I was willing to embark on, not just for him, but for us for the chance to rediscover our connection and explore the uncharted territories of our relationship. As the night grew deeper, so did our understanding of each other. I held the keys to the handcuffs, both literally and metaphorically, 
unlocking not just the metal binding his wrists, but the chains of secrecy and silence that had constricted our marriage. The confrontation, fraught with fear and uncertainty, became a pivotal moment, the first step on a path that promised a fusion of our hidden desires and unspoken needs. The dawn of Fred's transformation into Alicia was a canvas of mixed emotions. There was a palpable tension in the air, a blend of anticipation and apprehension as we embarked on this uncharted journey together. Fred, or rather Alicia, stood hesitantly, his eyes reflecting a tumult of fear and excitement. The transformation began with clothing. I carefully selected each piece, considering what Fred had revealed about his desires, what I had read, and what felt right in this newfound dynamic between us. The first time he slipped into the silky fabric of a dress, the change was palpable. His posture, his movements, even the air around him seemed to shift, embracing the persona of Alicia. I watched as he looked at himself in the mirror, his expression a complex tapestry of emotions. There was a vulnerability in his eyes, a stark contrast to the usual confidence he exuded. The reflection staring back at him was familiar, yet foreign a visual affirmation of his hidden self made manifest. The moment was intimate, transformative, and laden with a silent, profound understanding that things between us were irrevocably changing. Makeup followed, each stroke of the brush adding layers to his persona, accentuating features he had never thought to highlight. The act was both personal and exposing, as I painted the visage of Alicia onto the canvas of my husband's face, with each application of color, Fred receded and Alicia emerged, her existence no longer confined to the shadows of hidden fantasies. Naming him Alicia was a symbolic act, sealing his identity transformation. It was a name he resonated with, one he confessed he had always admired in secret. Addressing him as Alicia, seeing him respond to it was a surreal experience, a constant reminder of the journey we had undertaken together. The humiliation aspect was something I approached with a mix of trepidation and determination. I understood its importance to Alicia's desires, the complex interplay of shame and exhilaration that he craved. Enforcing strict rules and creating scenarios that aligned with his fantasies was a balancing act of respecting his limits while pushing the boundaries of our comfort zones. The scenarios varied, each designed to elicit the complex emotional response that humiliation provided him. Whether it was serving me in an exaggeratedly submissive manner, performing tasks dressed in outfits that accentuated his femininity, or addressing me with titles that reinforced the power dynamic, each act was a thread in the tapestry of his humiliation, a tapestry we both wove with cautious hands and open hearts. Witnessing Fred embrace his alter ego, Alicia, with a mixture of reluctance and relief was a poignant experience. Each act of submission, each moment of humiliation seemed to unburden him of a weight he had carried for too long. And for me, each command given, each scenario enacted, was a step deeper into understanding the complex man I had married. The transformation and the accompanying acts of humiliation were not just about fulfilling a fantasy. They were acts of revelation and acceptance. As Alicia stood before me, a blend of the man I loved and the persona he had longed to express, I realized that this journey was not just his alone. We were both transforming, navigating the delicate dance of dominance and submission, exploring the depths of vulnerability and power, and in the process, rediscovering each other in a light neither of us had anticipated. As the days unfolded into this new reality, the initial resistance that Fred, now Alicia, had exhibited began to wane. The boundaries between reluctance and acceptance blurred, and a subtle transformation took place within him. The clothes, the makeup, and the name Alicia started to fit more naturally, like pieces of a puzzle that had been waiting to be placed. There was a gradual easing into the role, a shedding of the skin of resistance, revealing a layer of contentment and liberation underneath. Alicia began to move with more confidence, embodying the femininity of her attire with less hesitation. The awkwardness that once clouded her actions dissipated, replaced by a graceful acceptance of her new identity. The mirror no longer reflected a man in a dress, but a figure embracing her true self, her expression softening into one of satisfaction and peace.
This acceptance was not just a superficial adaptation to clothing or makeup. It was deeper, touching the core of her being. Alicia found freedom in the submission, a paradoxical liberation in the confines of her role, the acts of service, the compliance with my commands, once sources of humiliation, became sources of joy. There was a pleasure in the predictability of her duties, a contentment in the structure of our redefined relationship. The humiliation, once feared, became a cherished aspect of her existence, a reaffirmation of her identity and role. As Alicia found solace in her submission, I too was undergoing a transformation. The initial apprehension about stepping into a dominant role gave way to a growing sense of empowerment and pleasure. Directing Alicia, controlling aspects of her life, and witnessing her submission filled me with a sense of authority and confidence I had never experienced before. The power dynamics between us shifted and solidified, forming a new foundation for our relationship. My commands became more assertive, my expectations clearer, and my satisfaction in Alicia's obedience grew. The thrill of dictating her actions, of molding her into the persona she longed to be, was intoxicating. The more she submitted, the more I felt in control. And this control was exhilarating, addictive even. Our interactions became a dance of dominance and submission, each step choreographed within the boundaries we had established. The role reversal was complete. I was no longer just Sandy, his wife, but his dominatrix, his guide in this journey of self-discovery and fulfillment. And Alicia, once my husband Fred, was now my willing submissive, finding joy in her servitude and humiliation. The acceptance of our new roles brought an unexpected intimacy to our relationship. Our conversations delved deeper into desires and fears, our connections strengthened by the honesty and vulnerability of our interactions. The role reversal, rather than driving a wedge between us, drew us closer, knitting our lives together in a complex tapestry of love, power, and acceptance. In this new world we had created, the lines between pleasure and pain, dominance and submission, were not just blurred but irrelevant. We had transcended the conventional boundaries of marriage, venturing into a realm where our deepest desires were not just acknowledged but lived. Alicia's journey into her submissive role and my exploration of dominance were not just acts of role-playing but profound expressions of our true selves, revealing the depth of our love and the strength of our bond in the luminous light of acceptance and transformation. The evolution of Alicia's role within the safe confines of our home had become a comfortable routine, a secret world where she thrived under my guidance. But the true test of her acceptance and my control came when I decided it was time to extend her boundaries beyond the private sphere. The thought of introducing Alicia to the world, exposing her to public scrutiny, was a daring escalation of our dynamic one that promised a new level of humiliation and challenge. The idea materialized into a plan where Alicia would work as a waitress in a bustling bar and grill. The thought of her serving patrons, interacting with strangers while embodying her feminine persona, was thrilling and daunting in equal measure. The anticipation of this public exposure stirred a complex mix of emotions in both of us. For Alicia, the fear of public humiliation was palpable, her anxiety evident in the tremble of her voice and the hesitant way she moved around in her new waitress uniform, a stark symbol of her vulnerability. The first day of her work was a maelstrom of emotions. I watched as Alicia, dressed in her waitress attire, struggled with a maelstrom of fear and reluctance. Her eyes, wide and apprehensive, sought reassurance, and I provided it through firm commands and encouraging words, pushing her gently towards the inevitable. Stepping into the bar and grill, Alicia entered a world far removed from the secluded safety of our home. The noisy environment, the clatter of dishes, and the murmur of conversations were starkly alien. As she began her duties, the initial awkwardness of her movements under the watchful eyes of patrons was palpable. The scrutiny was intense, the air thick with judgment and curiosity, each gaze a needle of humiliation piercing her newfound confidence. But as the hours ticked by, something remarkable happened. Alicia, driven by necessity and the desire to not disappoint me, gradually adapted to her role. The forced public exposure, meant to humiliate, began to forge a new layer of resilience in her. She started to navigate the space with more assurance, her interactions with customers becoming smoother, almost natural. 
The patrons, initially skeptical and amused by her appearance, began to respond to her earnest efforts. Respect, grudging at first, started to replace the mockery. Regulars at the bar and grill, who had initially whispered and snickered, began to see past the surface, acknowledging the diligent waitress who served them with unexpected grace and efficiency. Alicia's transformation in the public eye was a profound journey. The humiliation that we both anticipated became a backdrop to a more complex tapestry of experiences. Yes, there were moments of embarrassment and discomfort, but there were also moments of unexpected kindness, acceptance, and even camaraderie. Alicia, in her role as a waitress, became a known and accepted figure in the establishment, her initial fears of public exposure giving way to a sense of accomplishment and belonging. For me, watching Alicia navigate this public sphere was a source of pride and a confirmation of the depth of our connection. I had pushed her into this situation, fully aware of the potential for public humiliation, yet also believing in her strength and ability to adapt, the respect she earned from the customers, the way she carried herself with a newfound dignity, reflected the success of our journey together. The public exposure and work experience became more than just an extension of her humiliation. They were a crucible that tested and ultimately strengthened Alicia's identity and our relationship. In the bustling environment of the bar and grill, amidst the clinking glasses and casual banter, Alicia found not just humiliation, but a sense of self-worth and achievement, proving that the journey we embarked upon was about more than just exploring fantasies. It was about growth, acceptance, and the unexpected paths to self-discovery. As the days melted into weeks and weeks into months, the life we had cautiously navigated became less of a constructed scenario and more of a genuine existence. Alicia's role, initially a mask of fantasy and humiliation, gradually wove itself into the fabric of her being, becoming as real and integral as any deeply held identity. The boundaries between Fred and Alicia blurred and then disappeared, leaving behind a person who was more at peace, more complete than the man I had married. Alicia's job at the bar and grill, once a stage for public humiliation, transformed into a platform where she flourished, the regular customers, who had first gawked and whispered, now greeted her with smiles and warm banter. They respected her not as a spectacle, but as a person who brought a unique charm and efficiency to her work. Their acceptance was a balm to the wounds of her initial fears, soothing the sting of exposure with the salve of community and belonging. In the sanctuary of our home, the dynamics of our relationship deepened, rooted in the fertile ground of trust and mutual exploration. Alicia, once tentative and uncertain in her submission, now embraced her role with a quiet strength and a serene acceptance. Her submission was no longer just an act of compliance, but a gesture of trust, a surrender that spoke of deep love and acceptance of our shared path. For me, the journey into dominance revealed layers of my personality I had never known existed. The control I held over Alicia, once a heavy mantle of responsibility, became a natural extension of my being. The power exchange between us was no longer just about dominance and submission, but about a deeper connection, an unspoken dialogue of desires and fulfillment. Our lifestyle, once a clandestine experiment in the shadows of our marriage, became the cornerstone of our existence. The practices and rituals that defined our roles provided a structure and rhythm to our lives, each act of dominance and submission a reaffirmation of our bond. The lifestyle we delved into was not just about playing roles. It was about living truths, about embracing the full spectrum of our desires and identities. Alicia's transformation was profound. She found in her new life a freedom and contentment that had eluded Fred for years. The fear and shame that once shadowed her steps were replaced by confidence and pride in her identity. In the mirror, she no longer saw a man awkwardly masquerading in women's clothes, but a woman who had found her true self, her expression serene and fulfilled. The evolution of our relationship was a dance of change and acceptance, a journey that took us through uncharted waters to a harbor of understanding and love. Our roles, once a source of curiosity and play, became the essence of our connection. 
a deep, unyielding bond that was both sanctuary and crucible, shaping us in its fires of transformation. In this dance of dominance and submission, we found more than just a lifestyle. We found a way of being, a shared existence that was rich, complex, and profoundly satisfying. The lifestyle we had chosen was no longer an exploration of forbidden fantasies, but a homecoming to a place of belonging and peace, a place where Alicia and I, in our respective roles, found the harmony and fulfillment that had long eluded us in the conventional contours of our past life, the tapestry of our life, intricately woven with threads of dominance, submission, and newfound identities, faced its ultimate test when the delicate balance we had achieved was threatened by an unforeseen storm. It started with whispers, rumors at the bar and grill where Alicia had found acceptance and a sense of belonging. A customer, fueled by prejudice and ignorance, launched a vicious campaign to unveil Alicia's past challenging the very essence of her identity and our lifestyle. The whispers turned into loud discussions, and soon a confrontational incident at the bar forced Alicia into the spotlight of judgment and ridicule. The incident, a public questioning of her identity and our relationship, was a harsh invasion of our carefully constructed world. Alicia, who had grown into her role with confidence and pride, was suddenly thrust back into the shadows of doubt and fear, her newfound peace shattered by the harsh glare of societal judgment. The conflict escalated quickly, spreading from the confines of the bar to the broader community, stirring up a melanage of legal and social issues. A lawsuit was filed against the bar for discrimination, dragging Alicia and me into a whirlwind of legal battles and public scrutiny. Our private life, once a sacred domain of personal exploration and fulfillment, was dissected and debated in the cold, impersonal rooms of law offices and courthouses. The stress and exposure strained our relationship, pushing the limits of our roles and the strength of our bond. The power dynamic that had been a source of strength and connection became a point of contention as we struggled to navigate the choppy waters of public opinion and legal battles. Alicia, once the submissive partner content in her role, found herself fighting against a tide of public perception that threatened to undermine her identity and our life together. As the case dragged on, the stress and constant scrutiny took its toll on both of us. The once clear lines of our relationship blurred, and the roles we had so carefully cultivated seemed inadequate to shield us from the storm. In the face of external pressures, we were forced to reassess our lives, our decisions, and the sustainability of our chosen path. In the crucible of conflict, a transformation occurred. Our roles, once rigidly defined, became more fluid, adapting to the needs of the moment and the demands of our situation. Alicia's resilience and strength emerged, transcending her submissive role, while my dominance took on a more protective and supportive form. Together, we navigated the legal and emotional maelstrom, drawing on the deep well of trust and understanding we had built. The resolution came not in the form of a legal victory or a public vindication, but in the quiet realization of our enduring love and the strength of our bond. The lawsuit was eventually settled, the public scrutiny faded, and the storm abated. But the journey left indelible marks on our relationship and ourselves. In the aftermath, we emerged changed, the conflict, though harrowing, stripped away the superficial layers of our roles, revealing the deep, unshakable foundation of our partnership. We realized that our connection transcended the roles of dominant and submissive, touching the core of who we were as individuals and as a couple. The resolution of the conflict was not an end, but a beginning, a door to a new chapter in our lives where the roles we played were important, but not defining. We learned to adapt, to support each other in new ways, and to face the world together, fortified by the trials we had overcome. Our journey into the lifestyle we had chosen continued, enriched by the experiences and lessons learned, a testament to the enduring power of love, understanding, and mutual respect. In the quiet aftermath of our tumultuous journey, Alicia and I found ourselves standing at the crossroads of our shared existence, reflecting on the path we had traversed and the horizon that lay ahead. The conflict and its resolution had acted as a crucible, testing and ultimately strengthening the bond between us. 
We were no longer just the dominatrix and the submissive. We were partners who had weathered the storm together, emerging more resilient and interconnected than ever before. As we rebuilt our lives, the roles we once clung to so rigidly evolved into expressions of our deeper selves, no longer the entirety of our identities, but facets of a more complex whole. Alicia, with her newfound strength and resilience, and I, with a deepened understanding of power and care, found a harmonious balance. Our relationship, enriched by the trials we faced, became a dynamic dance of mutual support and respect, a testament to our growth and adaptability. The reaffirmation of our new lives and roles was not a loud proclamation, but a quiet acceptance of our transformed selves. We no longer needed the strict confines of our roles to define our relationship. Instead, we drew strength from the fluidity of our bond, finding comfort in the knowledge that we could be who we needed to be for each other, adapting to each moment with love and understanding. However, life, in its inexorable flow, brought with it a twist that tested the very foundation of our renewed connection. A job opportunity arose for Alicia, one that promised not just professional fulfillment, but also necessitated a relocation to a place where our lifestyle might not be as accepted or understood as in our current community. The prospect of starting anew, of potentially facing new judgments and challenges, loomed large, casting a shadow of uncertainty over our hard-won peace. The decision to embark on this new journey was fraught with apprehension. It was a choice that demanded not just the consideration of practicalities, but also a deep introspection into the essence of our relationship. Could our bond, now free from the strictures of defined roles yet enriched by our shared experiences, withstand the pressures of a new beginning? Were we ready to step into the unknown, armed with nothing but our love and the strength of our partnership? After nights of conversation, reflection, and soul-searching, we reached a decision. The challenges we had faced, the growth we had experienced, and the love that had deepened between us fortified our resolve. We decided to embrace the change, to view it not as a threat, but as an opportunity to explore new dimensions of our lives and our relationship. The move was a leap of faith, a step into a future filled with unknowns. But it was a step we took together, hand in hand, with the confidence of two people who had navigated the stormy seas of conflict and emerged with a stronger, more resilient bond. In conclusion, our story is not just a tale of transformation and role exploration, but a narrative of enduring love and adaptability. The conclusion of our journey was not a definitive end, but a gateway to new experiences, a testament to the power of love, understanding, and the continual evolution of our lives together. Our story reaffirmed that in the face of change and challenge, the essence of our relationship, our ability to grow, adapt, and support each other, remains unshakable, guiding us toward a future filled with possibilities and hope.